Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've taken some of my most popular crock pot videos and I have compiled them into one big marathon video. So if you like crock pot meals and you're looking for some ultimate inspiration, then grab some pen and paper, some coffee, and enjoy this video without flipping through several videos. They're all going to be right here in one. Crock pot meals have always been my favorite because cooking's not my strong suit nor my interest. So me and the crock pot have become really good friends over the years. So I hope you enjoy this video and get all the inspiration. So this first one is kind of a no brainer. We are going to do beans in the crock pot and serve them over rice. This is perfect for a meatless meal. So what I'm gonna do is take about a cup of beans. I have pinto beans here. You could use whatever kind of beans you wanted to use. I'm gonna add in some ham flavoring. I'm gonna use just one packet of that. I think you can find this at Walmart and then I also have some water that I am going to pour over the beans. So we're just gonna add our beans in and then go ahead and pour the water. And I'm pouring in just enough to have about an inch over the beans you want to make sure those beans are nice and covered so that they have plenty of liquid to cook with and then we're just going to take that one packet of ham seasoning we're going to whisk that in we're going to place this on high for about four to five hours and if you want to do this on low then you will just need to double your time and on the side we just made some potatoes and onions and sliced up a cucumber and that was meal number one Meal number two, we are gonna make some pork nachos. So I have one pork loin and we also made some homemade salsa. This looks completely disgusting. It looks like vomit, I know, but it is a homemade salsa. However, you are more than welcome to use the jarred salsa. And then we're also gonna add in a good tablespoon or two of taco seasoning. And this part's completely optional, but I'm gonna use a slow cooker liner for this. It just makes for easy cleanup. So we are going to go ahead and place in the liner and our pork loin. And this was actually a, I can't remember how many pounds it was, but it was a half of a pork loin that we had in the freezer. I'm going to go ahead and put in my taco seasoning and then I'm just pouring in some salsa and you can use however much you want. Now we're just going to place the lid on and we are going to cook this on high. I did it for about six hours. Of course, if you wanted to do it on low, you would just let it go for about eight hours. And now that it's all done, I'm just going to take some forks and shred it up. You can serve it however you want. We served ours over nachos and we also took the beans that we had the night before and used those as a topping with some cucumber and some sour cream and a little bit of shredded cheese. I think this would have been even better if we would have had some of the white queso cheese. It just needed a little something extra, but overall this is a really good meal. And now we are going to move on to meal number three in the south here. We call this a low country bowl. I think there are some other names for it. I can't remember right off hand, but basically it's just a concoction of sausage, shrimp, corn, potatoes and some Creole seasoning. So I just have a small three pound bag of cooked shrimp. We have a little baby hen there. We also are gonna use some of this smoked sausage, some russet potatoes and some corn on the cob. For seasoning, I'm gonna add in some Creole seasoning. You could also use Old Bay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take the tails off of my shrimp. Now, because my shrimp is already completely cooked, I could have waited until the last 30 minutes to an hour to add in my shrimp. So if you guys do this recipe, just add in your shrimp the last 30 minutes to an hour. The shrimp really doesn't need to cook the whole time that this meal cooks. I'm not sure what I was thinking that particular day, but I added it in first thing. Overall, it still turned out good. You just don't need to cook your shrimp as long because they are already pre-cooked. They just need to heat through basically. And then we are going to 
cut our sausage into chunks and you can use however much sausage you want you can completely customize this to your family's liking so if your family likes more sausage and less shrimp you could totally do that you could add in more corn I just added in about four cobs and now I'm taking my russet potatoes I'm leaving the peels on you could peel yours if you want to and I'm just cutting them into chunks Now we're going to place the potatoes in, sprinkle in some Creole seasoning. I went a little bit heavy on the Creole seasoning. This is also to your liking. Just sprinkle however much you want or prefer. And then we're gonna give it a toss, let everything get nice and coated, and then we're gonna set it to high for about four hours. Everything in this recipe is already cooked. It just needs to heat through and your potatoes need to get soft. but this is what it'll look like when it's all done it was really really good and it smelled delicious while it was cooking so you guys know that i love sour cream so i just have some sour cream served with mine on the side i always get lots of comments about my sour cream but i just personally like sour cream on a lot of things in my opinion sour cream makes everything better and then our very last meal i'm gonna make a meatloaf in the crock pot and this is also something that you could prep the night before, set it in your refrigerator, and just put it into your crock pot before you leave for work or school the next morning. So all you're gonna need is one pound of ground beef. I have about three banana peppers chopped with one small onion. We also have some minced garlic. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of that. And then I also have the end pieces off of a loaf of white bread. We're also gonna add in an egg for binding. And then I have just a little bit left of this roasted garlic and herb seasoning. I would say there's probably a good tablespoon in there. What we are gonna do is I'm gonna take some foil and place that onto the bottom of my crock pot and I'm gonna spray that with some cooking spray. Next, we're gonna go ahead and mix up our meatloaf. So I'm just putting in my seasoning, my garlic, my peppers and onions, the bread and the eggs. Now, whenever you do the bread, you wanna make sure that you crush it up really fine. You don't want chunks of bread and that along with your egg is what's gonna bind your meatloaf together. and you just wanna make sure that that's mixed really well. I'm using my hands for this. I just find that it's the easiest to use my hands. And then the next thing we're gonna do is place it into the crock pot and shape it into a loaf. And then I'm gonna place the lid on and cook it on high for four hours. And then of course, if you wanted to do it on low, you would just need to double your time. So whenever it's done, I'm just gonna drizzle some barbecue sauce that we had in the refrigerator on top of it. This is the Sunny's barbecue. I think some people like ketchup on top of theirs. Just do whatever you like on your meatloaf. On this side, we had some carrot sticks that we roasted in the oven and some scalloped potatoes. And I make this one a lot on my stove top and also in my pressure cooker. But if I need to dump and go, I usually will just use my crock pot. So for this one, all you'll need is one to two boneless skinless chicken breasts cooked and shredded, one box of pasta of your choice I'm using bow tie two cartons of chicken stock two cans cream of chicken two cans cream of celery salt and pepper 
So we're gonna start by pouring all the ingredients into the slow cooker except the pasta. We'll be pouring that in closer towards the end. And I'm using my Kasori that multifunctions as a pressure cooker as well. But I'm gonna use it on the slow cooker setting for today. And there is a link down below if any of you are looking for a good multifunction cooker. I do highly recommend this one. So we're gonna give it a good start and we're gonna set it on low for about three hours. Once we have about 30 minutes left, we're gonna go ahead and pour in the pasta and I'm gonna use the whole box. Once it's done, you'll salt and pepper to taste and I don't measure out salt and pepper. It's all to taste, so just use however much you like. And on the side is a must and that's garlic bread. I always like to get the love kind because it crisps up a little bit better and it's perfect for dipping. And that's it, this soup is amazing. It's my go-to when any of us are sick. There's just something about a good chicken noodle soup. Next up is a tortellini soup, completely meatless, although not vegan. This one's good if your budget's a little tight and you need a meal that would be fine without meat. This is it. So all you'll need are two cans of diced tomatoes, one bag of spinach that I only use half of, but you can use however much you like, one block of cream cheese, one bag of cheese tortellini, and one carton of chicken stock. Once again, just throw everything into the crock pot and I diced up my cream cheese so that I could drop it in more evenly. And then you just wanna give it a stir and this is what it'll look like. So we're just gonna cook it on low for five to six hours. This side, I just baked this loaf of bread. This was in my freezer and it needed to be used. This is the private selection cranberry and walnut bread and you can find this at Kroger. And there you have it. This was really good to have zero meat in it and some of you were wondering about the great value tortellini in my grocery haul and honestly it wasn't bad at all but I've never tried the name brand tortellini either so I'm not sure what I'm comparing to but to me it wasn't bad and my whole family loved this one. Next up, we're gonna make a chicken fajita spaghetti and all you'll need is some spaghetti pasta, two cans cream of mushroom, half of an onion diced, one green bell pepper diced, one to two boneless skinless chicken breast, one fourth cup of water that I actually never ended up using so you can probably skip that, salt and pepper, one to two teaspoons of garlic powder, one teaspoon of cumin, and a couple handfuls of cheddar cheese. Gonna go ahead and we're gonna put everything minus the pasta and just throw in a handful of cheddar cheese and give it a good stir we're gonna cook it on low for five to six hours or you can cook it on high for three to four once it was done I boiled my spaghetti separately and then I also removed my chicken and diced it up and then I just poured them both in threw in another handful of cheese and gave it a good toss And we just had a salad and some cucumbers on the side with it. Next up is a pot roast. For this, you'll need five to six medium sized yellow potatoes, half of an onion. I chop mine, but I leave it chunky. And then one can of beef broth, one packet of onion soup mix, and a small bag of carrots, although I only use half, and then of course a roast. Once again, we're just gonna throw everything in and then I sprinkled a little bit of garlic powder in there, just a dash or two, and then you'll cook it on low for six to eight hours. And I love how tender this came out. We just ate it as is, almost like a beef stew. This one's really good during cold weather also. Lastly, we're gonna make a Swiss chicken. This one tasted so much like Thanksgiving and we all loved it. I doubled this recipe so that we would have leftovers. The link to the original is down below. So I'm using two cans of cream of mushroom, six to eight slices of Swiss cheese, one stick of butter, a half a cup of milk, one box of chicken stuffing or stovetop, and 10 boneless skinless chicken thighs. 
We're gonna go ahead and spray the slow cooker with some cooking spray and then we're gonna lay all the chicken across the bottom. Next, I went ahead and topped the chicken with some Swiss cheese. And then we're gonna mix the cream of mushroom and the milk together in a bowl and pour that over the top. And then we're just gonna pour the stove top over that and then we're gonna drizzle the stick of butter melted. I cooked mine on high for about five hours, but you can do low for eight to 10. And then on the side, we had yams and green beans. Like I said, it reminded me so much of Thanksgiving. We're gonna make a seasoned chicken, potatoes, and green beans. While you could serve this as is, we decided to do a salad and rolls on the side. You can totally have it as is. You really don't need anything extra with it. And before I get into this, you can double or triple any of these recipes depending on the size of your family. So for this one, all you're gonna need are two boneless, skinless chicken breast, two to three russet potatoes, one can of green beans that I do not drain, and whatever seasoning that you wanna use, I'm gonna use this Cavender seasoning and you can find this at Walmart. Just a really good all-purpose seasoning. I'm gonna start by spraying my slow cooker with some olive oil so that everything doesn't stick. And then we're gonna take the chicken breast and I'm gonna go ahead and cube up my potatoes and I didn't peel them, you could peel them if you wanted to, but I just decided to leave the peel on and I'm just gonna take and cube those up. And now we can go ahead and put in the green beans and like I said, I did not drain, I used the juice and everything. Once I had everything in, I went ahead and sprinkled everything with this Cavender's all-purpose seasoning and I went very heavy on it. We just like a lot of seasoning and it gave it lots of good flavor. I needed mine to cook rather quickly, but if you wanted to cook this all day, you could set it on low for six to eight hours or you can do like I did if you need it faster and cook it on high for four to six. Like I said, once it was done, we served ours with a salad and some rolls, but you could totally just have this as is. You really don't need anything extra to go with it. We made a homemade honey mustard dressing to go on top of the salad and I had just put a little bit on top of my chicken. Our next recipe, in case you guys did not know, you can make spaghetti in the crock pot. So that's what I did. This was my first time doing this and it turned out amazing. I will be making my spaghetti in the crock pot from now on. So all you will need is one pound of cooked and drained ground beef and I like to do this ahead of time so that I have some in my freezer and I can just pull it out on days that I want to just dump it in my crock pot and go. You'll also need one box of thin spaghetti, one jar of your preferred pasta sauce. I'm just going to pour everything in as usual and after I pour in this jar of sauce, I'm going to take and fill the jar up with some water, give it a shake, and then pour that in with everything else and that's going to add some liquid for the pasta to cook. going to give that a quick stir just to make sure everything is mixed up well. And before I put in my pasta, I'm going to drizzle about a tablespoon of olive oil. This will help prevent your pasta from sticking together. And another thing that I did before I put the pasta in was I broke it in half so that it was easy to stir. Once I had the pasta in, I just kind of pushed it down into the sauce and folded it over, just trying to get all of the noodles coated.
Then you are gonna place your lid on. You can cook it on low for four to six hours or high for two to three. And then once it was done, we served it with a side salad with our homemade honey mustard dressing. You could also do some garlic bread, but we decided just to stick with the salad. Next up, we are gonna make one of my favorite dishes here in the South, and that is rice and tomatoes. We always love to serve ours with sausage or bacon and some homemade biscuits. You could even put the sausage in to cook with it if you wanted to. We just decided to do ours on the side. So for this recipe, all you'll need is one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes, two cups of white rice, and I will say that cooking with rice can be a little bit tricky and mine did kind of turn into mush a little bit. I think I cooked it just a little bit too long, but I'm thinking if I use brown rice from now on, I won't have that problem. So you can use white rice, just keep a close eye on it to make sure that it doesn't turn into mush. And if you would rather prevent the whole mush thing, just use brown rice instead. You'll also need one and a half cups of water for every cup of rice and then two teaspoons of chicken base, which is optional. You don't have to use this. We just used it for extra flavor. I'm gonna start by placing my two cups of rice into the slow cooker. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my tomatoes, and I chose to do crushed and diced for added texture. I figured if I had just done the crushed, there wouldn't be much texture to it, so I wanted to add in the diced to add in that texture. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my water and my chicken base, and we're gonna cook everything on low for four to six hours or high for two to three. And like I said, just keep a close eye on your rice to make sure that it doesn't turn to mush. I cooked mine for four hours on low and I think that was just a little bit too long. So maybe next time I make this, I will cut it back to three hours on low instead. And then, like I said, we chose to serve ours with sausage and homemade biscuits, but you could totally just have the rice and tomatoes as is, or you could cook your sausage in with the rice and tomatoes and have like a one dish meal. Next up, this was probably my favorite one, and this is a slow cooker funeral potatoes and sausage. All you'll need is some southern style hash browns and I got the two pound bag but I'm only going to use half of it. You'll also need some beef smoked sausage, one can cream of chicken, and one and a half cups of shredded Colby Jack cheese and I do like to shred my own. Of course you could buy the bagged pre-shredded kind if you wanted to. And now we're just going to start pouring everything into the crock pot and like I said I'm only using half of this bag. I'm gonna go ahead now and cut my sausage into half moons. And I cut this so weird. I don't know why I didn't cut it long ways first, but anyways. So I'm just gonna put the sausage on top, give it a good stir. I'm gonna place my lid on, cook it on low for about four hours. Or if you wanted to cook it on high, I would just do it for two to three. Four hours later, this is what it looked like. It was so yummy and delicious. I make a lot when I'm out of ideas. It's cheap and takes hardly any effort at all, whether you make it in the crock pot or the stove. All you're gonna need is a boneless, skinless chicken breast, four cups of water, 
some yellow rice. You can also use white rice. I just like the flavor that yellow rice gives. You can also find this particular one at Sam's. And you'll also need some chicken base, which you can also find at Sam's. I'm starting by cooking my chicken. I'm just placing the chicken in the crock pot, pouring in my four cups of water. And because it's a teaspoon of chicken base per cup of water, I'm putting in four teaspoons of that. And this will create a chicken broth for the rice as the chicken cooks. I just cooked it on high for a couple of hours and then once it was done, I removed the chicken from the broth so that I could shred it up. I mentioned shredding chicken with a hand mixer in my last video and you guys requested to see how I do that. So um, when I have a lot of liquid like this, I remove the chicken so it doesn't splash all over while it's shredding. So in a separate bowl, I just turn my hand mixer on low and it shreds pretty easily and quickly. It's the best hack ever. Once it's shredded, I just place it back into the broth and then I'm just going to add two cups of rice give it a stir and cook it on low for just a couple more hours. To make this recipe more of a dump and go, you could use pre-cooked chicken and also store-bought chicken broth. I didn't have that, so I had to cook my own chicken and make my own broth. Also, quick disclosure, I wanna add that these recipes are primarily for convenience. I do get a lot of comments about how unhealthy they are, but we do not eat like this all the time. These are meant to be quick and convenient to keep us from eating fast food when we're in a pinch for time. And also, I'm feeding a family of four, so if you have a larger family, then you can definitely double or triple these. We also eat fresh veggies on the side with these, so just because we don't have veggies in the actual recipes, we still have them on the side. However, you can add veggies to any of these. It's all about doing what you feel is right for your family. The next recipe I'm gonna share is chicken tacos. This one cannot get any simpler. All you're gonna need is a boneless, skinless chicken breast, some taco seasoning, and salt and pepper. I sprayed my crock pot with a little canola oil, placed the chicken in, and then I sprinkled in two tablespoons of taco seasoning, which is equal to one packet. A little salt and pepper, and then one fourth cup of water. And then I just turned it on low and cooked it for two to three hours. Once it was done, I shredded it up with my hand mixer. And for our toppings, we used Colby Jack cheese, lettuce and tomato, some sour cream, and also some tortilla shells. And this is how they came out. They were so good and so easy to do. We had some leftovers the next day for lunch and decided to put them on tortilla chips and made like chicken nachos with it. And that was really good too. So that's just another way that you can eat these. The next recipe was oh so good. I would definitely be making this again. It reminded me a lot of a local Japanese steakhouse that's popular where I live. It was delicious and it's also a subscriber recipe so thank you to Nani Ortiz for sharing this with us. I hope that I said your name correctly. Um, this is everything that you will need. Two boneless skinless chicken breasts, cubed, two carrots, peeled and chopped, some broccoli. I used half of this bag. You'll also need some teriyaki sauce, sesame seeds, and then some white rice. So the first thing that I did was place my chicken in the crock pot and I just doused it really good with the teriyaki sauce. I didn't measure, I just eyeballed. Turned it on high for a couple of hours and I let the chicken get a head start cooking before I put in the veggies. After an hour or two, I added in the carrots and broccoli and I let it cook on low for two to three more hours. I do recommend going ahead and putting the carrots in when you start the chicken though just because they were still a little bit crunchy and could have used a little more cooking time. Also, if you use frozen broccoli like I did, don't add it until the last 30 minutes as I overcooked mine. We also decided to add in a teaspoon of garlic and we're just using the jarred minced garlic. When it was done, we topped it with some yum yum sauce. You can find this at Walmart and most grocery stores, but I do know that Walmart carries it and also some sesame seeds. Once again, thank you to Nani Ortiz so much for sharing this recipe with me. 
I will definitely be making this again. The very last recipe was actually recommended by a few of you. I made a Mississippi roast in my last Dump and Go video and you all mentioned doing the same recipe except with chicken and it's also a lot cheaper. So all you need is some boneless skinless chicken breast. I used three, some ranch seasoning and because I didn't have any au jus mix, I'm gonna use brown gravy and it still turned out just as good. It's all about using what you have, right? And then also some pepperoncinis. You can also add in a stick of butter, however I opted out of that. You're just gonna place the chicken in the crock pot, sprinkle about two tablespoons, both of the gravy and the ranch mix, throw in a few pepperoncinis, and I also added in a bit of the juice for some extra flavor. I turned it on low for about four to five hours. Once it was done, I just shredded it up and then we had it on rice. However, I think this would make some really awesome sandwiches and also would be really good in a wrap too. We love this one as well and we'll definitely make it again. It's gonna be a French toast casserole. We love to have breakfast for dinner around our house. So this will actually need to be prepped the night before so that the bread has time to soak up the mixture before it cooks. So all you're gonna need is some white bread. I just have a little over half a loaf here. Three eggs, one cup of milk, one fourth cup of brown sugar, a dash of cinnamon which is optional and also a splash of vanilla which is optional as well so I'm gonna start by dicing up my bread into cubes Once I have it all cubed up, I'm gonna take a crock pot liner and place it into a large bowl. And I'm gonna place all of the bread into that bowl. And now in a separate bowl, I'm gonna to mix together all of the milk, eggs, brown sugar, cinnamon, and vanilla. And we're just gonna pour that mixture over the bread. Now I'm gonna take a bowl cover and you can find these at the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna place one over the top and set it in the fridge overnight. And then tomorrow, all I have to do is transfer the bag into my crock pot and cook it on low for about four to five hours. After about four or five hours, I took a fork and I stuck it in the middle just to make sure that it came out clean and that there was no egg mixture left uncooked. And then I just drizzled it with some syrup and served it with sausage and that was it. This would also be really good with some fresh fruit on the side as well. Recipe number two is gonna be a broccoli cheese rice casserole. So all you'll need for this one is one boneless skinless chicken breast cooked and shredded and also a cup and a half of chicken broth. You can buy this in the carton but I didn't have any so I made my own when I boiled my chicken. So that's why my chicken is in the broth. And then about two cups of Colby Jack cheese, one cup of rice, one can of cream of celery, and a 16 ounce bag of frozen broccoli. 
So I'm putting everything into the crock pot and you'll see in a second that I end up adding an extra half a cup of water. It looked a little thick and I knew the rice would still need to cook. So I added in that extra half a cup and it turned out perfect. I cooked mine a little bit too long. I thought I could cook this overnight and I don't recommend doing that as I overcook my broccoli and also my rice. So I recommend four to five hours on low. Overall, the flavor was good. It was perfect on flavor. Just don't cook it as long as I did. This next recipe was oh so good. This one has a few more ingredients than all of the other recipes that I normally share, but it's so worth it and it makes a great freezer soup for later. For this, you'll need one pound of cooked and drained ground beef. You can do this step ahead of time and store it in your freezer. As this applies to any of these recipes that requires cooked meat, go ahead and have this step done so all you have to do is pull it out of the freezer on the day that you need it. Two cups of rice. I'm using minute but regular long grain rice will work. One tablespoon of sugar, a 29 ounce can of diced tomatoes, and all I had was whole, so I'm gonna be crushing those up. One 14 ounce can of chicken broth, a 10 ounce can of tomato soup, one large bell pepper, one small onion, one teaspoon of garlic powder, cheese for topping, which is optional, and then of course, salt and pepper. As the usual, I'm just putting everything into the crock pot. And as I stated, I'm just gonna crush up my tomatoes since all I had was whole tomatoes on hand. It's all about working with what you have. <laughs> You just want to dice up your onion and bell pepper and throw those in as well. I went ahead and I threw my rice in, but I should have waited until the last hour to throw that in as I definitely overcooked it. Just wanna give it a good stir and cook it on low for six to eight hours. Here's how it came out. It was so, so good. And the smell was amazing in the house as it cooked. We like ours thick, so if you want yours to be thinner and more soupier, then I recommend just adding an extra can or two of chicken broth. Next up is a salsa chicken tacos. I've made these before without the salsa, and you guys recommended that I add salsa the next time. So I gave it a try, and it was a huge hit. It made a big difference. So I'm adding in two completely frozen chicken breasts, and we have them wrapped in these fold top sandwich bags so that they don't stick in the freezer. And then I'm gonna throw in the jar of salsa, 
two tablespoons of taco seasoning and two tablespoons of ranch and that's it. Once it's done, I just shredded it up and then we ate it over soft shells and topped it with lettuce, tomato, cheese, and also some sour cream. Our very last recipe is a chicken casserole. It reminded me a lot of Thanksgiving and you can do this one of two ways. You can put your chicken in to cook with everything else. It just takes longer to cook, of course. Or you could do like I did and use pre-cooked chicken to cut down on the cooking time. So all you're gonna need is one chicken breast cooked and shredded, or as I said before, you can put in a raw chicken breast and just let it cook with everything else. We just needed this meal a lot sooner, so I'm using pre-cooked. And I didn't measure my sour cream, but I used about two good big spoonfuls. Um, and then you'll need one can of cream of celery and a box of stuffing mix. You can double or triple this recipe to make it work for your family. And you can also add in some frozen veggies if you like. So I'm just gonna throw everything in my crock pot and pour the stuff and mix directly on top. I'm gonna cook it on high for one to two hours or low for three to four. You're mainly just waiting for the stuff and mix to soften up. And this is what it came out like. It was really good. And as I stated, you can throw in some mixed veggies and also double or triple this recipe. This one is a Mississippi it. roast. All you need is one roast, one packet of au jus gravy mix, some pepperoncinis, and then about one packet of ranch seasoning mix. I'm gonna start by lining my crock pot with these crock pot liners. You can find these most anywhere, but I'll also try to link them in my Amazon store for you, and I'll have that in my description box. I like to use these if I know it's something that's gonna stick to the crock pot and could potentially be a mess to clean. These just make for easier cleanup. Once I have the liner in, I'm just gonna put the roast directly into the crock pot, and then I'm gonna go ahead and top it with the au jus mix, the ranch, and the pepperoncinis. I use about three to four pepperoncinis, but you can use however much you like. And then we're gonna go ahead and cover and cook on low for six to eight hours. On the side, we just had some instant mashed potatoes, brown and serve rolls, and a salad. I always like to put a little bit of the juice from the roast on top of my mashed potatoes. It's seriously so delicious. Meal number two is gonna be a ravioli lasagna. This one was a huge hit, and we will definitely be making it again. For this next meal, we're gonna do like a ravioli lasagna type thing. You can find this bag of ravioli at Sam's Club. This is the 64 ounce bag. I'm probably not gonna use this whole bag, maybe half. Um, so, and it's just the cheese ravioli. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix this pasta sauce with some ground beef. This is just a pound of ground beef. And because this is a dump and go meal, the tip that I have for you guys is that if you wanna be able to just dump this meal in your crock pot, go ahead and have some ground beef cooked ahead of time and in your freezer. I did not have any in my freezer this morning, so I went ahead and browned this up. But like I said, that's a tip for you guys and that's a great time saver. You can go ahead and have it browned do like maybe a pound at the time in bags. That way you can just pull out a pound of pre-browned ground beef and it's ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix the sauce in here and we're gonna layer it with the ravioli and then maybe like 10 minutes before I serve it, I'm gonna shred this Colby Jack cheese up and put that on top. The sauce flavor I'm using is garlic and herb, but you can use whatever flavor you like and I actually ended up only using one can, but I just stirred that into my ground beef. I started with a layer of the sauce first and then I topped it with a ravioli and then another layer of sauce and I just kept layering it until I ran out of sauce, making sure that the last layer was sauce. And then I just cooked it on high for about four to five hours or you can do low for six to eight. About 10 minutes before serving, I'm gonna top it with some shredded cheese. You can use whatever cheese you wanna use. I'm just using this Colby Jack that we already had on hand.
To go with it, we had a few dinner rolls that needed to be used, so I just topped those with some butter and some garlic powder, and I popped them in the air fryer for a couple of minutes. And that's the completed meal. I topped mine with a little sour cream and then we just had some tomatoes and cucumbers on the side with it. This was seriously way too easy. Using the frozen ravioli was a huge time saver and it tasted exactly like traditional lasagna. The next meal I'm gonna share with you guys is just a basic sausage and potatoes recipe. This has always been one of my favorite things to eat. Something about it is just so comforting and it's just way too easy to make. <laughs> To need is about four small to medium russet potatoes, one pack of smoked sausage, and a half of a yellow onion. I'm going to start by chopping my potatoes. I chose to leave the skin on mine. It doesn't bother us, but you can totally peel them if you don't like the skin. And then I also left them kind of chunky, but if you like yours cut up smaller, then you can do that too. In order for the potatoes to cook properly, I went ahead and added in one cup of water and I also seasoned them with a little salt and pepper. And now I'm gonna go ahead and dice up half of an onion and throw that in as well as the sausage. cooked it on low for about six hours and that's all there is to this meal. This one is also good to throw in some green beans at the last minute or you can serve them on the side. We were out so we just had the sausage and potatoes. The very last meal is a chicken and dumpling recipe. All you need for this is one can cream of celery, one can cream of chicken. I have two cans of flaky biscuits here but I only used one. And since I'm gonna make my own chicken broth, I have some chicken base here as well as two boneless, skinless chicken breast. The longest part of this recipe is cooking the chicken. To make this recipe more of a dump and go, you could use pre-cooked chicken and also store-bought chicken broth. It would come out just the same, but because I have neither of those, I'm gonna do my own. I'm just gonna place my chicken breast into the crock pot and pour in four cups of water, which is equal to one 32 ounce carton of chicken broth. And then for the chicken base, it's one teaspoon for every cup of water. So because I added in four cups of water, I'm gonna put in four teaspoons of the chicken base and also a little salt and pepper. I cooked my chicken on low for about six hours and once it was done, I just removed it from the crock pot so that I could shred it up. I also went ahead and poured in my cream of chicken and celery. I went ahead and shredded my chicken with a fork, but a tip that I have for you is to use a hand mixer. It's a lot faster if you have one. going to add that back into my crock pot and then I'm going to dice up my biscuits and throw those in as well. Once everything is in, I'm going to give it a good stir and cook it on high for about 30 to 45 minutes.
And that's all there is to this recipe. We really enjoyed it and we look forward to making it more. First one, we're gonna make some slow cooker barbecue chicken and it really could not get any easier. You're just gonna need about six to eight drumsticks and your favorite barbecue sauce. All right, so you're just gonna place your drumsticks into your slow cooker and go ahead and pour your barbecue sauce on top. And I'm gonna cook this on high for four hours. If you need it to go longer, you can just set it on low for about six to eight. And how you serve this up is completely up to you. We just had it with some stewed squash and onion and also a roll. This next one is a slow cooker tortellini. It's really easy and delicious and it's also kid friendly. So you're just gonna need one pound of ground beef cooked and drained. And as I've said before in my previous dump and go videos, to make this more dump and go, I encourage you to have some ground beef already browned and in your freezer so that you can just pull it out and dump it into your crock pot on the day that you wanna make these meals. You'll also need one 19 ounce bag of frozen tortellini and a jar of pasta sauce. And one extra ingredient that is optional is cheese for the top, although you do not have to have cheese. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is pour in my ground beef and go ahead and pour my pasta sauce in with that. And I'm gonna give it a stir to combine the meat with the sauce. All right, and then we're gonna pour in the tortellini, give it a stir, place the lid on, and we're gonna let this go on high for two hours. Or if you need it to go longer, you can just do it on low for about four hours. And that's just a little bit of extra sauce from the jar. All right, so this is what it is looking like. You could go ahead and eat it like it is, but I decided to top it with some cheese. And like I said, that is totally optional. You don't have to do this part. Um, we just had some cheese in the refrigerator that I'm gonna shred up. You can use pre-shredded if you want to. We just really like to shred our own. The quality is a lot better. So I'm just gonna take and place that on top and place the lid back on for just about 10 more minutes and let that cheese melt down. And then to go with these, we had some of these hamburger buns in the freezer. So we took those out and I just took and spread a little bit of butter on each slice, sprinkled a little bit of garlic powder, and then put it in the air fryer for about five to 10 minutes until it was toasty. And that is it, it was really easy to do and the kids really enjoyed it. 
And like I said, that cheese is totally optional because the tortellini does have cheese inside of it. So you could totally skip the whole cheese part on top. All right, this next one is a slow cooker chicken and gravy and we ate it over a baked potato. This was a really, really good recipe. I highly recommend it. It had a lot of flavor to it and it smelled really good when it was cooking all day. So all you're gonna need, and you can adjust this to your family size, just keep that in mind for any of these recipes. So you're gonna need one boneless skinless chicken breast, one can of cream of chicken, and one packet of Lipton onion soup mix. I'm gonna start and go ahead and turn my crock pot on and I'm gonna place my chicken into the crock pot. And I have said this before, if you're gonna put frozen chicken into your crock pot, I do recommend that you cook it on high just because if you do it on low, it may spoil before it reaches cooking temperature, if that makes any sense. So if you're gonna cook with frozen chicken, cook it on high, but you can do this on low if your chicken is already thawed. Next, I'm going to take that cream of chicken and also the packet of Lipton onion soup mix and I'm going to mix that together just to combine it. All right, and then we're just gonna pour that over the chicken and that's pretty much it for this one. We're just gonna place the lid on and let it go on high for about four hours. And like I said, if you're cooking with thawed out chicken, you can do this on low for about six to eight. All right, this is what it's looking like. It doesn't look very appetizing, but I promise you guys it smelled and tasted so delicious. So I'm just taking a fork and I'm shredding my chicken up really fine and just getting it stirred into the gravy. And we did our baked potatoes in the air fryer and we also did some green beans on the side. And there you have it, slow cooker, chicken and gravy. This is definitely a win and will be a new go-to recipe. All right, for the very last one, I think I've showed this one time before, we're just gonna do some salsa chicken. So all you're gonna need is one boneless skinless chicken breast and one jar of salsa. And we only had this half of a jar, so that's what we used. So once again, we're just taking the chicken, placing it into the crock pot, and we are gonna pour the salsa right on top and I'm gonna go ahead and cook this on high for four hours. Or like I said in the previous recipe, if you're cooking with thawed chicken, you can cook it on low for six to eight. All right, so this is what it's looking like and I'm gonna go ahead and shred that up with a fork. 
We actually did not eat this the day that it was filmed, which is also the day that I'm editing this video, but we do plan to eat this on soft shell tacos tomorrow, the day that you're seeing this video. And you can also have this over chips and top it with some cheese and make like some nachos. And if you wanna make this even more flavorful, you could add in some taco seasoning. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did. And also if you're new here, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.